This is one of the spectacular images taken by the Webb Space Telescope, unveiled for the first time. What you're seeing is just uh, a week's worth of data. Think what we're going to learn in 20 years. The hope is it will answer some of our biggest questions, revealing how stars are born and how they die, and showing us other planetary systems to see whether life could exist on worlds beyond our own. And lift off. Decollage. Decollage, liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. One question that the mind of every intellectual was so curious to ask since the universe was discovered that how did it start? Is there a creator of the universe or has everything started on its own? There have always been many religious and scientific dogmas attached to this notion throughout the discourse of history up until the Big Bang Theory, proposed by George Lemaitre in 1927. However, the universal expansion based on general relativity was also predicted by Friedman in 1922. From then till the recent images of James Webb Space Telescope, Big Bang was believed as probably be the most accurate and reliable theory of the birth and expansion of our universe. But the James Webb Space Telescope has completely amazed the whole world of scientists in its first eight months of discoveries. The recent images of the earliest part of the universe by Webb are no different from the other. What are the facts present in these images that might have the potential to prove the most widely believed theory about the beginning of the universe wrong? And all the fuss about the debunking of the Big Bang by some people in their research papers in different journals recently after these first images is real. Let's find out in this video. Well, before we analyze what is exceptionally shocking in these images that might defy the logic of the Big Bang, we first should understand why Big Bang is so much trusted by the majority of astrophysicists, astronomers, and cosmologists. We will also try to find out the problems Big Bang Theory has and what other models for the explanation of the universe can be true, along with the shortcomings associated with them. Without going into much detail about what Big Bang is and how it happened, it alone needs an entirely separate video. The universe started from an extremely small and highly dense single point in time, not from the starting of time, and then stretched and expanded to its current form, and will keep on stretching. Edwin Hubble applied the rule of the relativity of it in 1929. He proposed that not all galaxies are moving away from us at the same speed, and the farthest galaxies are moving away with more incredible speed than the nearer ones. What an idea, right? The laws of physics are so wonderful. After understanding them, we can predict the future and what will happen after a specific time according to that law. The same goes for the past. After understanding general relativity and rewinding its mathematics, we can track back the progress of the universe back in time until the 10 rises to the power of minus 32. It was the time when eternal inflation started and everything expanded at an extremely rapid rate. The redshift of galaxies also proves this expansion of the universe. Redshift means a galaxy has traveled in space far distances that it has consumed so much of its energy, and its wavelength has increased. So farther a galaxy has traveled, the more redshifted it will appear and the more it has stretched. At a very particular moment when the universe was 400,000 years old and 1,000 times smaller than today, it was hot, dense and opaque as the inside of a star, containing a searing amount of electrons and protons inside it, also known as the plasma. This plasma cooled. At that very critical point, at the temperature of 3,000 degrees Kelvin, this plasma switched into gas and the first hydrogen atom was formed. At this same moment, the infrared light that was previously trapped inside this plasma was free to travel throughout the cosmos. These infrared waves are still traveling and contain an image of that early incident inside them. These waves are no longer infrared and switched to microwaves due to the loss of energy in the expansion of the universe. These are called cosmic microwave background radiations.
The Big Bang Theory predicts the creation of elements soon after the initial expansion started and how much these elements were made in that early universe. When astronomers look back in time at very old galaxies, the amount of each chemical they see proves the Big Bang Theory. We cannot see this proof in the new stars like our solar system's sun. It is because the new stars contain elements from the older stars. So the chemical make of new stars is so much different from the old stars that existed in the early universe. Well, the mathematics of the general theory of relativity is constructive in rewinding the time until 10 raised to the power minus 32. Remember, we had just discussed that before 400,000 years, the universe was too hot for the atoms to exist. And before this 10 raised to minus 32 seconds, the conditions were too harsh for the fundamental forces of nature to exist. At this point, the physics we know goes out of the window, because here, general relativity comes under serious collision with quantum mechanics. So in order to proceed further, we need a theory of quantum gravity, also known as the theory of everything. We also cannot discuss the candidates of this theory, the famous string theory, at this time. In a nutshell, we have made assumptions for the time before that, and no one knows whether they are right or wrong. We still have no machinery or mathematics to testify that. As we have discussed above that after 400,000 years when CMB was released, the temperature all over the cosmos was 3,000 Kelvin. And after that, atoms formed along with the CMB. It is bizarre. Consider an example of hot water, and you add milk to make tea. After some time, the temperature all over the cup will be the same. The universe also acts in a similar way, except when we rewind the things with general relativity, we come to know that up until that point, time was not sufficient for this uniform mixing all over the place, not even for the speed of light, the fastest thing in the universe. So the two horizons or edges of the universe should not have the same temperature because they are expanding way faster. This is known as the horizon problem we have to solve yet. The only solution we know to this problem is a universe that is very dense, compact, and small, able to mix its temperature and expand much faster than relativity allows. If someone wants to go back and see what happened there in terms of mathematics, String theory is the only possible solution that seems, except that we don't have it at the moment. It can combine general relativity with quantum mechanics and go before that 10 raised to minus 32 second we have reached until now with the help of Big Bang Theory. No wonder string theory logically seems to have all the answers to our most asked question about the origin of the universe. Still, we don't have the facilities for testing these incredible mathematics. Multiverse theory has been proposed by many scientists in the discourse of the last 100 years. Seen Carroll also has been one of the very enthusiastic proponents of it. You can also see the idea of Stephen Hawking's multiverse. The problem that Seen has is he thinks that why time only has to move forward, and he believes that our universe didn't start at the beginning of time. Rather, it started from a bigger multiverse. Dark energy plays a crucial role in the starting of new universes. Most of them end up in black holes, but sudden expansion or eternal inflation happens every now and then by the factors controlled through dark energy. Time does not run forward in all these universes. In some, it may move backward. Well, no matter how amazing it sounds, we cannot test this theory. Perhaps when a better explanation of dark energy is available, we might be able to give a shot at this mind-boggling work of seeing Carol, but with the currently available technology and science, it seems almost impossible. In the recent images by the James Webb Space Telescope, there are rumors everywhere that the James Webb Space Telescope has disproved the Big Bang Theory, but that's just not true. Here is the problem that created all the fuss. The current theory of the Big Bang suggests that earlier formed galaxies should be very small and have irregular shapes, 
but the images released by James Webb Space Telescope show that there were fully developed and regular galaxies present in the early universe, which Big Bang Theory does not allow. So the redshift of these galaxies suggests that they were formed at a time when according to our understanding of the universe with the Big Bang Theory, there should not be any fully formed galaxy. Does this debunk Big Bang? Certainly not. It simply tells us that the earliest galaxies formed much quicker than we thought previously. Remember, we already have discussed this in the dilemma of time about the Big Bang. One another significant thing to consider is that the images Webb sent were from the last undiscovered time from the early universe, so things can be slightly different than we expected. It clearly does not mean that the whole theory of the Big Bang was wrong. One more wrong misconception among the people is that James Webb Space Telescope has seen or will see things older than the universe itself. This is altogether impossible, because Webb has been technically designed to see the happenings of the event's maximum of 100 million years after the Big Bang, when the first stars and galaxies started to form. That's why it simply does not have the potential to look before that. So this misconception is also completely wrong. Now we only have to find an explanation for this earlier formation of galaxies, which was already an enigma for scientists to solve. More images from the James Webb Space Telescope will also help until we find some suitable instrument that will take us towards the origin of cosmic background radiations, or we somehow get lucky to find practical implications of string theory so that the origin of the universe will be clearly within our grasp. Perhaps a better understanding of dark energy will promote the race of men to the multiverse. That's the beauty of science. We just cannot drop any possibility. This is the end of today's episode. Please subscribe to the channel and give your valuable feedback in the comment section.